Microwave Massacre is the story of Donald, a disgruntled construction worker who is at odds with his wife because of what she makes for dinner. Well, and lunch, his lunch for work. Yeah. Bull cordon bleu doesn't yes. tickle his fancy. He wants his bologna and cheese. He talks about bologna and cheese a lot. Yeah. Well, like most relationships, it all comes down to what's for dinner. <laughs> Well, this movie opens magnificently with a severed head in a microwave, setting the tone for this magnificent motion picture. Uh, and then it kind of goes into the, the greatest opening scene ever, which includes boobs <laughs> and a crab sandwich. The One of the best parts about the boobs, other than them being boobs, is, is the way it, it happens. It's This movie is really corny and... Uh, Wacky. Wacky and corny. Yeah. Super wacky. A woman, like, walks up to just holes in the wall in yeah. a construction site. Kind and of then almost boob-shaped holes. <laughs> yes, very boob-shaped holes. And then another guy molests her or something? I don't know what's Well, first he on. pinches her ass. Right, which was like, oh, that's, okay. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's fun. That's acceptable. Yeah. In this movie, it's, it's fine. fine behavior. Yeah. But then, so she, when she, she goes into the thing, but then she starts to get undressed and she's like bouncing around and then they don't show the guy anymore. Yeah. And it gets kind of weird, but they don't, don't think about that because you're too entertained by boobs and crab sandwich. Yeah. And the sandwich is just full on crab. Yeah. It's an actual crab, a crustacean critter between two slices of bread. No, we're not talking like seafood salad. No, 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 no. no. This is a, an actual crab. Right. Let's talk about the grumpy bartender, your favorite character in this movie. I love the grumpy bartender. Yeah, who doesn't? Uh, he doesn't want to hear your shit. He no. just wants to serve you alcohol and be done with it. Pretty much. He has a license to serve liquor. He does not have a shrink license, as he states in the movie. Yes. So every time someone comes to get hit, it gets alcohol from him, the first thing he says is, I don't want to hear it. No. Don't tell me your life story. And everyone's trying to tell him because he works at like a strip club. Yeah, so. he's not... He's not uh, friendly to the women of the night either He's not no. very whore friendly No He's very mean to a particular hooker in this movie actually Kicks yeah. her out Very much But um, Our hero was there to save the day Yeah well <laughs> I'm so hungry I could eat a whore So this movie had some wonderful 70s-ish music <laughs> I wonder if it was like an authentic score written by a, a talented musician. What do you think? No. Oh, no? but I do love the music. <laughs> it fits this movie so well. It does. Yeah. And it's very memorable. It's very simple, very memorable. Funky at times and then weird at times. Um, very cheesy. Very cheesy. But it fits because the whole movie is cheesy. So it's it's God, yeah. it's like a jolly good time in terms of the, the music. It's you, You're kind of like bumping your head as it's going. It doesn't... It's not very horror music, no. you know, because this movie is kind of you know, cheeky. So it's, uh, it, it's music that may make it onto my workout playlist. Nice. So poor Donald. He's working at the constru construction site. He's there with his friends who have normal meals, normal lunches. <laughs> Sometimes it's Jack in the Box. Yeah, they went out of their way to throw Jack in the box. Yes. I wonder if they were sponsored. I hope so. Because they specifically say, Jumbo Jack. <laughs> Try the all new Jumbo <laughs> Jack. My favorite, hot meat. Yeah. It's my classic Jumbo burger with fresh lettuce and tomato. And it's still just 99 cents. So as I was saying, poor Donald, his friends have normal food. He's stuck with crab sandwiches, but he then turns to dog food sandwiches. Right, which, which he enjoys. He does. It's better than the crab. But then he still hates her for making him have to eat that. Yeah. I don't well, you know, the, the, a dog comes by and he starts feeding the dog. So maybe he, f he feels bad for the dog, feeds it all his food, then he's left with nothing. So he still resents his wife for forcing him to turn to dog food. Yeah, I don't understand <clears throat> his infatuation with the bologna sandwich. Bologna's okay. I mean... 
don't get me wrong, that's that's an okay meal. I feel like if you're working at a construction site, you actually might want a bigger meal than a bologna sandwich. But they don't do any actual construction in the movie, so maybe, in fact... They wear hard hats. Right, that is a lot of work. So maybe he doesn't need the nutrition, he wants something simple. But I don't understand. He, he The whole movie, the, his whole grudge against his wife is, I want a simple meal. Now get me that bologna and cheese. But why not just make yourself a sandwich? <laughs> I think all of this movie just would simply not happen if he just said, you know what? You made a nice meal, but tomorrow for lunch, I'm going to make myself a ham sandwich. See, that's, that's not his job. It's his wife's job to prepare him a meal every day. Yeah, she does seem to be self-employed or the homemaker. She is. But you know what? I, I kind of... I Resent Donald. He's, he crushes the dreams of his of his wife. Poor May. She has ambitions. Okay, she wants to make bull cordon bleu. She wants to make some spinach thing. Trufant. Trufant. Yes. Uh, and he just he doesn't appreciate it. No. Okay. He he turns the dog food. He I don't know. I think it's you're like, giving her a little too much credit. No, he needs she, to no, support no, no, no. her. Support she, your wife. She makes all this in a microwave. She slaves. She says this. I slaved over the microwave all day. A microwave is a very respectable, reputable uh, way of, of preparing food. What are you talking yes, about? Yes, if you're at McDonald's, <laughs> Jack or, in the Box, or yeah, yes, uh, or if you like TV dinners, but you don't make bull cordon bleu <laughs> in the microwave. I wonder where she got that recipe. <laughs> I think she's coming up with them on her own. And why is it a why is it a huge industrial sized microwave? Where it's the first microwave, <laughs> like old computers. Yeah, that's like what took up I entire mean, that's rooms. That's what they're implying. <laughs> it has like thirty buttons on it. It does. There's like a there's three panels of buttons. We know there's a slow broil button. Speaking of which, um, yeah, Donald, in a drunken rage, uh, murders his wife. With a salt shaker. With a, with a salt shaker. Salt or pepper? Salt, because he throws them over his back. That's the, okay. that's the joke. In oh, the middle, that's right. In the yeah. middle of the killing, he stops and he... What if he did like, the, like the meme guy with the... Yeah. And then come morning time, he's ready to go to work. He finds his lunchbox is empty. Oh, no. May, where's my food? And then slowly he comes to the realization that... And then that evening, I think he kind of subconsciously picks up the bright idea to eat the evidence of his crime. Yeah, he picks it up from a TV show telling him yeah. to eat the evidence of your crime. It's the only way you'll get away with it. Not just any TV interview. It's a profanity, profanity buzzer TV interview. Yes. Where it's, they're like trying to be funny, and it's, it's almost funny, but then I'm just kind of like... Well, I've, you know, that's not the first time I've heard that joke done. I've actually heard it multiple times. Where you know, like they're they're bleeping out the profanity and something that normally wouldn't have that. So even though this movie had done it a while ago, it's kind of lost its luster because I've seen it. Yeah, so it recently. Count. It's no not one, it's no. not fair to it though. Because it, it is it is no one's fucking seen microwave massacre. Nobody cares. Yeah, but I'm saying it did it first. <laughs> I know, but nobody cares. Yeah, but <laughs> if I hadn't no. seen all those, it no, you don't care. Good. Nobody cares. I <laughs> fucking care. It was quite a tirade, Jim. It would have been even worse if Paul hadn't been so quick on the profanity buzzer. <laughs> well done, Paul. You're back on the payroll. <laughs> As for you, you fucked up. One of my favorite things about this movie is its constant use of one-liners. Mm. And puns and very short jokes. And We should say the star of the movie who plays Donald was a comedian. Yes. We think. I never heard of him, but he, he was a comedian, so he's probably a special... A specialist in one-liners. He kind of reminds me of that um, that comedian. I can't think of his name. 
Jerry Seinfeld. No. Ronnie Dangerfield. Yes. Oh, wow, really? Yes. Jesus, okay. It reminds me a little bit of that. You know, this very uh, cheesy humor. <clears throat> uh, but w- what's funny about this is it's bad. Most of it's really bad, and that's what makes it funny. And then some of it's actually almost funny. Uh, but there's just so much of it that you're going to laugh at something, whether it's just the p- sure mass of yeah. these one-liners. Because they, every single sentence is almost meant to set up or be the one-liner. There is no fat on any of this movie. There's not like dialogue, just a dialogue. There's al- it's always trying to make some sort of joke. Yeah. This movie throws a ton of shit on the wall. And some of it does stick. But a lot of it falls and off. And the rest, it, it doesn't matter because there's a ton of shit on the wall. It's funny. <laughs> yeah. Look at the messy, shitty wall. Yeah. <laughs> He's still throwing it. <laughs> That's what you're saying in your head. Yes. I haven't had one of these since 1962. Times a cigarette tastes perfect. But is this for after sex or before dinner? So Donald then starts sharing his delicious meat at work with his buddies. Because they asked to try his food. It looks so enticing, this huge hunk of (laughs) meat. Uh, this phallic chunk of meat, they're like, oh, I want to try that. Can we try that? And they do, and they they think it's delicious. Well, in fairness to them, he's always been so upset with his meals. They finally see him enjoying uh, something. That's a good point. They don't re- it doesn't really come off in the scene, but that's the point. He's always He hates his meals. He hates crab on a bun every time. <laughs> he's, he's finally free of those meals, and then all of a sudden he comes in with this massive aluminum foil wrapped, you know, just ginormous just chunk of meat. That's all it is. It's a tummy turn on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. They are uh, beside themselves when they try it. I really think that these guys should have uh, tried out uh, for something on Food Network. Because, yeah. you know, when you get to the part where in Food Network they try their food, some of them don't quite nail it. Mm. They're like, mmm, this is good. The, the blah, 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 blah. No, 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 no. I want these guys. Yeah. They're like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. This is the best tasting food ever. In fact, one, after immediately trying it, says he could eat this every day for the rest of his life. Right. That and tasty. that's what Donald offers up. Yes. And that evening, I think he tries a new recipe, uh, a hand kebab. <laughs> he does. So he's shared his meat with his co-workers now. Uh, they love it. So now there's like a supply and a demand kind of thing. So he needs, he needs more meat. He needs ultimately victims. He starts killing innocent women, uh, including hookers. Women, mainly hookers. Mainly hookers. Almost all hookers. The world famous San Diego chicken. True. Who turns out to be a woman. <laughs> yeah. Um, a Latin woman. A Latina of the Latina variety. <laughs> and then he even, well, he doesn't kill, but he locks his sister-in-law, his inquisitive sister-in-law who's looking for May. I'm like, where's May? He locks her in a closet. Uh, yeah, with bread in her mouth. He stuffs bread in her mouth. Well, yeah, he doesn't want her to starve. I mean, it's more as men as a yelling suppressant. but <laughs> in fact, Scream <laughs> suppressant. You know what the best part is, is When she's going in to investigate her sister, who's dead, and she goes in, she's going to find out that she's dead. That's the whole point. So he knows this. So he goes, determined, to get something to deal with her. What does he choose but a roll of bread as his takedown weapon? And uh, he doesn't even do it very well. The scene's kind of clankety. He's like, misses and stuff. But eventually he kind of puts it on her mouth. And then she just passes out because... Because bread. (laughs) Exactly. Because bread. Yeah, I I don't know. And then the bread starts going bad while she's locked in the closet. And it's... I guess that's supposed to be funny. It's like a little gag. And it's like, okay, that's funny, I guess. (laughs) 
That's the uh, shit on the wall theory yeah, as we talked definitely. about earlier. Ultimately, though, uh, Donald loses to the microwave. Donald loses to the industrial sized microwave. Mm-hmm. There's a little warning on the inside that we find. It says it may, affa- it may affect pacemakers. And as we know, um, Donald has heart problems. Yep. Uh, he even he visits his doctor. What's, his, what's the doctor's name again? You can go right into the examining room. The doctor's waiting for you. Ach, du lieber Augustin, Augustin, Augustin. Ach, du lieber Augustin, bum, 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 bum. There were some other colorful characters in this movie, like the drive-thru lady. Drive-thru lady. Yeah, when Donald and his work buddies go to a drive-thru to some place, and they they put in a silly order, which is just actually, hey, strip strip your clothes and have a Coke ready or something. Tongue out. Oh, I missed the tongue out. Damn it. Stick your tongue out and show us your dick. (laughs) Okay, what? (laughs) And as they drive, they're like giggling, and they drive, they drive by, and they don't realize that she actually did it. She, she did. She's she a dedicated worker. You know, you don't see that kind of dedication from fast food workers nowadays. No. Taco Bell always gets my order wrong. Yeah, I always ask them to hike up their skirt and unbutton their blouse. Never do I get it. I really loved a hardware store guy. He was a quirky fellow, and he made no sense, which is great. He tried to jam. What he? He's. He might be an okay comedian, probably not. But what, first of all, I think he's a friend of the main character. A friend? A friend of Donald's, the, the actual comedian. I bet he threw him in there because he's like a comedian friend. But um, that's what it felt like. But the guy just tried to jam-pack too many jokes into too short a period. <laughs> yeah. The guy, Donald was probably like, all right, you got like 15 seconds. <laughs> you know, just you know, throw a joke in there. And he's like, I got to do like six, six jokes. Yeah, yeah. So he just... He right. rattles off like three or four jokes, and they're t- all terrible. As long as the camera's rolling, that guy was throwing jokes out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Again, throwing shit on the wall and see what sticks. Uh, listen, I came in for some household items. You wouldn't happen to have any uh, six-foot cookie sheets, would you? No, sir. We're fresh out of that popular size. Well, uh, how about some uh, elephant-sized cooking bags? You know, the Dumbo-sized. You gotta have ten gallon mason jars. You have that, don't you? Hey, what are you, some kind of nut or something? Get out of here! I got a business to run. Every kind of creep comes in here. Hello, Coast Guard? Coast clear? Good. Oh, it's you again. Well, we're closed. How about the uh, orgy neighbors? The orgy party neighbors? Yeah, their neighbor. I can't even tell how many people live there. Yeah, there's like a cross-dressing dude. There's the attractive blonde. What? <laughs> the cross-dressing dude. Yeah. What? <laughs> His face. But the interesting part, she has to take it up a notch because she needs to be weird. This movie's quirky. She needs to be a weird neighbor. Right. So she dildos her garden. She has a vibrating dildo that she uses to plow her garden. Nice use of plow there. Thank you. That's good. She spreads seeds in her garden via a vibrating dildo. I don't get why you aren't... Say something, Matt. She fucks in! (laughs) So as the film wraps up, um, Donald's dead, uh, and someone, I guess, uh, emergency services. Um, no, they're they're moving people. Oh, they're moving people. Yeah, remember they're carrying the couch out the front, <laughs> and then some other people are like investigating the microwave. You're telling me the moving people find his dumb sister-in-law? Yeah, 
he died there, but <laughs> there's human parts <laughs> all in there. But the the movie they're like moving the couch and then they're like investigating the microwave. It looks like the moving people. Yeah, they're not dressed. That's fine. To be no policemen of That's any fair. sort. No emergency personnel. Anyway, one of them is Adrian Brody. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> Charlie, come here. You gotta see this. All right, Kevin. Let's rate Microwave Massacre. Okay. What, what do you say? Th three out of five. Yeah, okay. Oops, just like that? Yep. I could have said any rating. You'd have been like, okay. Sure. Probably. It's good five out of five. five. You already gave it a three. No, yeah, it's it's definitely above average. Uh, it's even even the fact that it's a comedy really doesn't hinder it because it's it's so. I don't even want to say silly. It's just bizarre, and I don't know. How do you describe it? One of a kind. Yeah. Wacky. Unique, geez. wacky. It's aged a little bit, which gives it even more <clears throat> of a shine. It, I don't know. It, it's, it's something that you can tell the person who wrote it is, I don't know. Strange? Yeah, their, their, their humor is a little weird, yeah. a little off, or maybe they haven't made a lot of movies, so it gives you this comedy that kind of doesn't work and kind of does. But that's what makes it funny, because the part that does work is funny, and then the part that doesn't work makes it not like, oh, I'm just watching another horror comedy. It kind of right. makes it itself. And even the horror aspect is just, it's like, yeah, it's a horror movie, but it's like, it's also just such a comedian vehicle of a movie. Yeah. Where, like, it's, I don't, I don't know, I don't get this movie. Like, put it this way. But it's good. If it's supposed to be a horror comedy, when he kills someone, mainly his wife, and we mentioned this, he interrupts himself to throw salt over his shoulder so he doesn't get bad luck. That's just a perfect example. Right. You know, when he most of the other deaths you don't even see. Well, at one of the deaths is just a woman naked on a table, and he spreads Miracle Whip over her with a very large knife. Like he's spreading Miracle, and then he puts a piece of bread on top of her. I need to stop you. It's, it's best foods mayonnaise. Damn it! You're right. <laughs> you're right. It's very blatantly best foods mayonnaise. <laughs> Nonetheless, that is how he kills her. Um, yeah. So it's it's really all comedy to be honest, but it's quirky because it kind of takes a not dark because it doesn't even do it in a dark way. No. It's a no. horror comedy that focuses more on the comedy, and that I think works more. I think a lot of horror comedies focus too much on the horror. They need to focus on yes. the comedy. And this one does it. We like Microwave Massacre. We liked it. Three to five. Pretty pretty scary bad. Quality stuff. Yeah. Or not quality. Quality, quality, low quality stuff. Yeah. That's what we like. Like us on Facebook. Tweet at us on Twitter. Follow us. What was that?